So you have to have a, a DRBDR election to determine which routers um, are preferred to be your, your designated router and backup designated router. Um, the election is de determined by first the, higher f the highest interface priority. Uh, interface priority is an arbitrary number configured manually. Um, the default on all your, all your OSPF routers is going to be one. Uh, higher numbers are preferred. Uh, if you manually set the value to zero on a router, um, it, it no longer takes part in the, the election process for DRBDR. In the event that you have not changed your, the interface priority on a couple of routers to make them be preferred the designated router or backup designated router, it's going to use the highest router ID. Um, and in the event of a tie, the, the highest router ID is going to win as well. So router ID we discussed before is going to be, in general, if you've configured it right, the highest IP address on, for a loopback on a particular router, um, your logical interface. You really don't want to leave it up to the highest router ID. Uh, usually your network is going to be set up in such a way that either because of the way they're setting on the network or the, the, uh, the type of links that they've got connecting to them or even the type of equipment, you're probably going to want to prefer one or two routers over the other routers to act as the, the designated router and the backup designated router. So um, it's highly, highly recommended that you know, when, you're, when you're building a network for OSPF, you look at all the routers on there, you decide which ones, you know, either based on you know, where they're located or what kind of interfaces they have or what kind of equipment it is, you want those to be your, your you want that to be your designated router. You got to go in and manually change the uh, the interface priority to a value higher than one. Usually, what you want to do is, you know, set one the one you want it to be the designated router to five, and maybe uh, the one you want to be the the backup designated router to four. And you may even want to, in the event that both of those go down, you may even have another router you want to set to a value of three so that it can pick up in the event that neither of those routers is online or something. Um, this assumes the routers all start the election at the same time. If not, the first router online becomes the designated router. So if you turn on one and then you wait 30 seconds and turn on all the other ones, it, you're not really going to have an election. It's just going to be the, the only one that was online at the time that the election started. To restart the election, uh, you can either take the current designated router and backup designated router offline, or you can restart OSPF and they'll, they'll have that election then. Um, so right here, you've got a, a area seven here. You're going to have a, a designated router and backup designated router for this network. So first thing you're going to want to look at is priority. So you can see these guys; they all have the default priority of one. Those have not been changed. But on these these two guys, D and F, they've manually changed the priority. So highest priority wins. D is going to be your deck, uh, your designated router because it's got a priority of 23. Uh, F is going to be your backup designated router because it's got a priority of 10. In the event that you had not changed the priority on these, you know, presuming that uh, D and F still had a priority of 1, it's going to go by the highest, uh, the highest router ID. Um, so let's see, all these are 10.1.42, so we got 105 right here, and we got 50 over here, so those are the two highest values. So if you had not set the priority to a different value on DNF, it would actually prefer A as your designated router and um, C as your backup designated router. You're going to have questions on the exam where you're going to have to identify what the backup designated router and what the designated router should be. So you need to know that you know, the priority takes precedence first and the highest router ID takes precedence after that if there's a tie or if they're, they're, all of the routers are set to the same priority. So become familiar with this. Make sure you, you know the process of determining who the designated router and the backup designated router are because you will have questions on it. Um, so <coughs> OSPF initialization. So the first thing that happens, neighbor, neighbor tables are established before exchanging updates. So all the routers uh, basically introduce themselves to each other give them the, the router IDs and they, they each individually build router tables with all of their neighbors in there, or neighbor tables with all their neighbors in there. After OSPF is started on a router, it sends a hello message out all OSPF configured interfaces to 224.0.0.5, which as we said before, that's the multicast address that all OSPF routers are going to be listening on. The message includes the router ID, the hello and dead intervals, the known neighbors, the area ID, the priority, the designated router address if there's one already, the backup designated router address if there is one already, 
um, an authentication password if that applies, and any stub area flags if those apply. If the area has a DR, the router synchronizes its topology table with the DR. Um, if it's a point-to-point, -point, the two routers synchronize with the neighbor on the other side of the link. Since there's only two routers, you don't have to worry about a DR and BDR. You just got to syn uh, synchronize your uh, table with the, the router on the other side. Once topology tables are synchronized, the adjacency is considered formed, and each router runs Dijkstra's algorithm. So, you know, kind of went over this before. Basically, you form all your neighborships, you send out a low initial hello information with all this uh, information. Um, you once all that's you've got your neighbor table together, you uh, you synchronize your topology table with the DR if one's already um, in effect. And then once you've got your neighbor table and your topology table in order, you can run the SPF algorithm to determine your, your best route to each of the individual subnets. So configuring OSPF, um, it's pretty straightforward, especially like if you guys are remembering this, any of this stuff on RIP. Um, the syntax is very, very similar. So start by configuring a loopback address to serve as the router ID. You always want to make sure you got that because you don't want to leave what your router ID is up to fate, just like you don't want to leave up who the designated router and backup designated router is up to fate. So to set a loopback uh, from global configuration mode, interface, loopback, and then loopback number, uh, this is can be any number from zero through, I think it goes through like two million something, so you've got a lot of options for loopbacks. Um, and then that'll jump you into interface configuration mode. IP space address space and then your your IP and subnet mask uh, and remember on a loopback it's going to be a slash 32 you only you don't have to worry about gateways and all that kind of stuff it's just a single IP so it's going to be two five fives all the way across from your subnet to uh, start the OSPF process use the command router space OSPF space the process ID um, the process ID number it doesn't have to match on all routers. Um, like you'll see right down here, it's just router space OSPF space. In this case, it's number seven. Um, that's it's an arbitrary number. Like it can, it does not have to match on all routers. If it does match on all routers, that's fine too. The reason that you've got a process ID is in very specific situations, you might be running two versions of OSPF on the same router. That's going to be a very unique situation. Um, so that's that's the only reason that you've got the the differentiator there. Um, when we talk about EIGRP later, the, the value that you put for EIGRP does matter. So OSPF, your process ID, it does not matter. It can be any, any number. It doesn't have to match on all routers. On EIGRP, it does have to match on all routers, we'll, but we'll talk about that later. When advertising networks for OSPF, use the network IP followed by the wildcard subnet mask and area number. The wildcard subnet mask can be determined by subtracting the regular subnet mask from 255.255.255.255. So wildcard subnet masks, to me, are kind of silly because the you could easily put logic in the router so that it would convert those automatically and you could just use regular subnets. But for, um, you know, for advertisements in OSPF in particular, and again, whenever we start talking about firewall ACLs later, Instead of using the subnet mask, you always use the uh, the wildcard subnet. So, you know, if you've got a say your subnet mask is a, it's a slash thirty, it's you know two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two five two. Just take this all two five fives and subtract the real subnet mask from it. In that case, you'll get um, you know zero dot zero dot zero dot three. In fact, you can see that's the one we use for this network down here. You can apply that rule for any um, any other subnet if you're trying to find the wildcard subnet mask. Uh, so full configuration, uh, router space OSPF space, and your process ID, in this case 7, uh, that jumps you into router configuration mode. Network space 192.168.1.0, with a, it's a slash 24, so it's wildcard mask, is 0 .0 0.0.0.255, and then space, and then your area number. Uh, so these guys are in area 0, so they're identified as such. And then the same thing for the other network that they're advertising on that router. 